Okay, this is just a fairly straightforward video on how to process a beauty shot. Um, this is uh, Amber Tutton, a fabulous UK based model. So we're in Lightroom. I'm just going to click on the crop tool and uh, I'm just going to basically crop it uh, to taste. Um, just bring that up to uh, below the, the shoulder, the clavicle bone there. And, uh, Leave a wee bit of space at the top of the hat. Okay, something like that should do it. And uh, shadows, I want to open up the shadows a bit. So um, shift plus is up 20, up another, up to 35 highlights. Now, <clears throat> we're going to fix the problem at the moment. You need to look at an image and say, what do you need to do here? So at the moment the chest area is too bright, this is where your attention is drawn and this is where you need to draw the attention. So this area needs to be darkened and this area needs to be brightened. Um, so I'm just going to bring down highlights 25 and uh, i just push the blacks 5, a wee bit of clarity. And um, send it straight into Photoshop. So uh, here we are. You can see straight away the uh, the problem that the face is not bright enough, and this is just a wee bit too bright in comparison. Um, I have a little action that I run that simply uh, <coughs> I call it brightens ten percent. And all it does is a duplicate layer with a, uh, that is brightened by 10% with a black mask over it. So then you paint through the black mask to reveal what's underneath. If I hold the shift key and click on the mask, that is what lies underneath the mask. That is what we're going to bring out on the face. So um, just so you know what I'm doing to get to there, um, I'll do it manually. So it's Command J for a duplicate layer image adjustment curves and uh, by default you'll probably find that you will push the curve up to brighten and down to dark and mine works uh, the opposite way around because I've changed it from being light to being percentage and the reason for that is basically that it allows you to be more precise rather than wanging the slider up or wanging the slider down you can work in uh, fairly precise ways this was uh, taught to me by Guy Gowan uh, I subscribe to his website on guygowan.com. So, um, if I change that 50 to a 40, that is 10%. I'm going to go a wee bit further. So there's 12%. So brightness has been increased by 12%. And then I hold the Alt key and click on the mask. And that is now blacked out by this black mask. So it's B for brush, X to make white my foreground colour. And uh, I'm going to paint at... Uh, 30% opacity with a soft edged brush. So at the moment that is set to brush in darken mode. Obviously I needed to work in normal mode so nothing happened there. There's always something that gets you. So this is several passes at 30% uh, each time. The more I brush, the whiter the hole in the mask will get. <clears throat> so there's the hole in the mask. If I hit Alt and click on the mask, that is the shape of the mask. You can turn it off and on, and there's the brightness. Now, the edges of that uh, mask are, even though that's the softest brush available in Photoshop, <clears throat> these edges are not as soft as they should be in terms of... Uh, um, you know, you really would like those to be a lot softer, particularly for printing purposes. So what you can do is blur the mask. And what I would do is filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And the bigger the hole in the mask, the bigger your radius will be. For this, I'd go quite high. I'd go for 75 pixels. 
Now, I would do this in, in a good old Belfast phrase. I would recommend that you basically blur the hell out of this. Um, filter Gaussian blur, filter Gaussian blur, filter Gaussian blur. So why can't Photoshop give you a brush that brushes with that uh, type of edge? I don't know, but you can certainly create it. So there's now a much softer transition uh, on that um, mask. I can still blur it again. As long as you've got the white box around the mask, you're blurring it. You don't have to see the mask uh, to blur it. I do think it helps. So, I mean, how many times is that that I have blurred that mask? Do not be afraid <coughs> to blur that mask. So there's the effect. Now, once you have that beautiful soft edge on the mask, you can then go, for instance, to image adjustments uh, levels and you can uh, bring back, uh, you know, some of the whiteness to it, etc. Um, so just simply uh, increasing the uh, the whites on it will make it that wee bit brighter, but it still retains that beautiful soft edge. So if you like it, at, I always say if you like it at 100%, you'll like it even more at 70%. So there's 70% opacity on that. And uh, I would, for the me for the moment, flatten that. <coughs> now this is still too bright for me. Um, in the old days, I would have used, simply done a duplicate layer, used curves, brought it down, and then painted over the shoulders. But the difficulty is that you're then painting over the background as well. In 2016, I normally I now use luminosity masks for this. This is a little panel provided by Tony Kuiper. You can Google them for more information, but I'm basically now going to select different levels of lights and see how much I want to see the the shoulder area selected here, the chest area. So lights two brings that up nicely in red. Uh, lights three probably isn't enough. Yeah, so it's hardly selecting at all. So we're going to go lights two. Uh, so that's lights two selected. We're going to put it into a curves adjustment layer and we're going to put it into uh, multiply blending mode. So don't worry what it's doing to the face here. I'm just looking at the shoulder. So there's the uh, the chest and the neck and the shoulder area nicely darkened. And you, you cannot ap apply a mask. This, this comes with the mask, which is created by the uh, selection of lights two that we did. So... I need to go Command-G to put this in a group and then Alt to put a mask on and now I'm going to close the group. Inside this, underneath this uh, mask is that darkened area. So um, I can either hit B for brush and paint over the shoulders and I'm only selecting, I'm only painting over the areas that have been selected with the luminosity mask. Or what I can do, if I just do Command-Z to undo that, what I can do is command click on the mask and that has made a selection and now when I paint B for brush not for 100% opacity now when I paint um, I'm because I've only got the highlights selected under the luminosity mask um, this will be a much more precise selection so look at the mask you know that is a mask it might look like the picture but it's actually a mask a luminosity um, mask based on the brightness areas of the image. So let's turn it off and on now. So there's a really subtle um, darkening of the skin only. It didn't affect the background whatsoever. Flatten image. Now I need to do Command D to deselect the selection that I've got made. And at this stage now I'll probably go back to my brightness 10%. Press play on that. So underneath this mask is that Lovely brightening again, so B for brush, we'll paint at 24%, nice soft edge brush. And remember what we said about um, blurring that mask, so filter, blur, Gaussian blur, I'm going to go for 100, <coughs> it's quite a big selection, and we'll go Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight blurs of a hundred on that, um, and it's beautifully soft edged. 
And uh, as I say, you don't have to have it at 100%. V for 7, 70%. If you're happy with it, flatten image. And uh, <coughs> I would do a wee bit of work on the eye there. Um, so Command J, Image Adjustment, Curves, and uh, again, Quite a big adjustment. Alt and mask. B for brush. And uh, not for 100%. And I'm going to go over that whole eye there. Now what I'm also going to do then is uh, I'm going to make a brush that size and I'm going to hit uh, 5. Which means I'm now brushing at 50% over that area. Just sometimes light, light doesn't get into the eye socket. So let's have a look at the mask. There's the mask. Now if I blur that, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, this is a smaller hole in the mask, so we do want to blur, blur it 100 because look, it just disappears. We'll type in a value of 25. And uh, let's just see off and on what that does. Um, filter, Gaussian blur, filter, Gaussian blur, filter, Gaussian blur. One more. So that is just a nice V and 7, 70%, just a nice wee brightening there in the eye without going too far. Um, little tip, Command J, and I'm now just going to work on the eye with, if you go into the dodge and burn, there's also um, a sponge tool. You can set that to saturate quite a high level, 33. And there are natural colors in the eye here. And if I'm just using the saturation tool on an adjustment layer, that's just bringing out some uh, real magical colours. Now that's too much. Um, go V6 or 60%. Flatten image. Uh, any little blemishes. Uh, Amber has fantastic skin, but any little blemishes. Um, I would simply do Command J for a duplicate layer. And uh, Spot Healing Brush. Just make them... Uh, the same size as any little blemish. It will not take very long with Amber's skin. And there we go. That's uh, so um, happy with it. Flatten image. Command J. And I do like a little bit of software called Imaginomic Portraiture. Um, I use enhanced tones rather than the actual, there's all sorts of settings in here. Um, but I like the enhanced tones. It's quite aggressive by default, but I've brought it down to uh, quite low levels. Um, <coughs> so if we look at the skin pores here, off, on, off, on. Just did a beautiful job. If you like it 100%, V7, 70%, and uh, flatten image. Let's try a little vignette. Select inverse, select and modify feather, quite a high value, we'll put in 400. Command C to copy, Command J to put it on a new layer, image, adjustment, exposure, shift and minus till we get down to minus 1.2. Turn it off and on to see the effect of it. Go for V7, 70%. Maybe go V5, 50%. Yeah. And flatten. Last little touch, Command J, filter, mix software, Color FX Pro. And we'll go into dark and light and center. So um, let's where the center is is going to be brightened by twenty percent. We're going to bring the border down minus thirty, and we're going to make it quite a small center, maybe sixteen. This is where the magic is. Place the center. We're going to place it just on that eye. Wait for Nick software to do its thing. And 
we can turn that off and on to see how much we're drawing the viewer's attention into the eye. I would probably go V and something in the region of 70% on that and uh, flatten it. Last thing I would do is sharpen Command J, filter, mix software. I use Output Sharpener. I tell it I'm sharpening for an inkjet. I tell it that I'm putting it on luster paper. I tell it that the um, resolution of my printer is 2400, which it is not, but uh, I just find that this is a perfect setting at 100%. I don't need to touch anything else. If it's slightly over sharpened on your screen, it is will make a perfect print. Actually, in this case, um, it's a bit too much. Um, I would probably bring that down to 70%. Click OK. And uh, we'll go again, B7, 70%. Flatten image. And there we go. Um, so if we go into the history, and we'll take a snapshot of that, and uh, we can show you that's where we started and that's where we finished in what 10 minutes less um, so thank you for watching again